Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about logging in Java. And what the way we are going to talk about logging, we are going to use the log4j framework and we are going to talk about the importance of logging and what levels to use. So first off, the importance of logging. When you have an application, you need to know what's happening in the application and you need to have information about both for debugging purposes, what is actually triggered in the application and for finding issues and solving problems in your application. You can have things that are fatal, that it, it will not happen, but if they do, it's really bad. Or you can have something that is just debugging information or trace information that is not really relevant, but it's interesting for you as a developer to have there. So let's jump over to some code and look at some implementation. So first off, I want to create a logger. So we do a final logger, logger equals logger, get logger. And then we have a class name here and I have this log4j example, this class. So now I created my logger. Very simple, very easy. With this logger, I can do log, logger, and then for instance, take info and then log some information. And this logger need to be static because I want to use it in this context. And for each class that you want to log something, you need to set this logger. So let's run this and see what's happening. And when we run this, we, it set, tells us that we have no appenders. That means that we don't have any source where we push these information to. So this framework is a way for you in some way to create very succinct messages and create bits of information that has a lot of metadata in it and then send them to a service that will uh, send them uh, to your different logging frameworks. So let's just create a very simple one. We will have the console appender here. So let's take a console appender. We can call that console appender. It's a new console appender. So then we have this. Then we want to take this console appender and set a threshold on it. And that's a level that we want to print out. So for instance, if I say info, I, then I want to have everything that is either an information or more severe. So if we look at the different levels here, we can have all, then I will get all information into this. If you are logging to a file, that could be a thing. Or if you have a logging framework that takes all the information and then gives you what you search for, then all could be a good option. Uh, then we have uh, trace, that's the never up. So you will get everything pretty much everything anyways, it's similar to all. Debug will not get the trace information, just the debug information. And then we have info, we have warnings, we have errors, and we have fatals. And if we go from the top here, if we have a fatal, a fatal is something that happens in your application that will make it crash, it crashes the application, or it's something where you can lose money, or if this ever happens, it's really bad for the application. This is something that we need to solve now, not later, exactly now, because this application is in a fatal state. If we go down one, we have errors. These are harmful, but not fatal. So these are things that we need to solve as soon as possible, but we don't need to stop everything and 
um, call in the business people and, uh, and go to work on this uh, 24-7, but it's something that we really need to look into because this is not a good state. Then we have warnings. And this is something that we should look into, but it's probably not something that will create some loss in the company, but it's something that we need to look at at some point, but we might not uh, prioritize it for now. And then we have the info and that's just information. And then how you use debug and trace is up to you. These are my definitions for logging. And you might have a separate definition of the same terms, and that's okay. The important part is that your company or the people that works on this application has the same picture of what these words mean. Because if you have something that is just informational and that is sent to the logging frameworks 200 times every day, and somebody has put that as a fatal and you will see it all the time, you will get annoyed and important stuff will be missed. So it's important that you find a way to create logging messages that is in a level that you are in agreement with the rest of the people in your company. So that's the first part that is important about logging. Another part is when we have these kind of logging messages here, let's say that this is an ordering system. And here we have just created an order. So order created. What could be interesting to know if an order is created? Think about it. Well, you probably have an order ID here. So put that in. Just say order ID like that. And we can create a local variable for order ID number 42, for instance. So what you can add to a logging message in order to make it more uh, readable and easier to find, that's very good. So let's say that we have a try catch here. Uh, that something got, got wrong, it thrown an exception, and we want to log this as, let's say, a warning. It's not super important, but it's still something that we want to take care of. We can, this is the least that you can do. You can log the warning at, with the message and the exception. If you do this, you will get a stack trace and know where in the application you are. If this, for instance, up here was order failed, and that is something that is should not happen. It's very, very bad. Uh, we can say that this is an error and you need to find this row fast. You can actually add a new exception here. Let's see if we can, if the, there. If I add an exception to this row, so we actually have a message and then an exception, I will get the same stack trace as I did before with this row. So if we run this example, again, we will not have any loggers, so that's not uh, important at the moment, but we will get a stack trace and know what did call this action and why, what output or where in the stack trace did this happen? So we can actually follow the call in. Let's continue here. We, we will need a few more things to actually get some output. We need a layout. And I don't know if that is important that you really need a layout, but I usually put one because I want the log message to look a specific, specific way. And you can put whatever you like here. 
Uh, I usually create a new uh, pattern layout and then I do date. So I want the date that this happened. So I will know exactly what second this actually occurred in my application. Then I want to know the priority and that's the info, fatal, or whatever level it is. I want to know the category and the category could be a way for you to categorize your logging. If you haven't put a categorization on your logging messages, that will be the fully, full class name at the moment. And then I want the short class name. So I just want the last part of the class name. So I don't want the uh, package name. And then I want the message that we wrote here. Let's see if I can get another one of those. So I want the message, that's um, dollar sign M. And then I want a line break. And you could do this just like that, but that's not platform agnostic. So if you do like this, the logging framework will help you and put the right lined endings on in your logging file, log files. So if we have set this pattern, we also want to um, activate all the options and then we can take our logger we can get our root logger and append this console appender. So now we have added an appender to the root logger. And whenever you create a new instance of a logger in any class, that root logger will be used. And you can put appenders on different uh, uh, levels in your um, structure if you like so you don't need you need to use the root level but i think the root logger is a really good place to put your appender and here you see that i have in my id here i have my output this order that failed it was order 42 and i also have this exception you have, would have gotten the same information down here but you would get the message of the exception and then the stack trace and here you see that something happened. I can create a new breakpoint. So it, that's a really interesting thing that the IDE gives you, creating a new uh, breakpoint for the exception, or you can jump to the row in your source code where this happened. And if you have multiple clauses or multiple functions, that the, then you can follow that stack trace down and actually debug and find the issue. So that's a really good way to work with this. And what is an appender then? Because there are so many appenders. There are file appenders. There are appenders for different logging frameworks. We have used sentries at work. We have used uh, Freshlytics or there are so many of them to choose from. And most of them have built appenders that you can just add to your application, configure them somewhat, and then send information over to that framework. Uh, but if you want to create your own logger or appender, it can be interesting to see how they actually work because they are not that complicated. So let's create my appender here and that will implement appender. And if we do like that and implement all the functions here. We can add filters if we like and handle those. And we can uh, close it of course. We can get the name or set the get name. We can have an error handler. We can set the layout and so on. Or we can say if it requires a layout. But the important part here is the do append. So let's say that I have a system out print line this event and then just get the message. So I just want to print the message. And then if we go back here and do again, logger, get root logger, add appender, new my appender. And we end that. And if we run this code with my appender in it, we should get the same output as we did before with the console appender, 
but we will get this uh, order 42 uh, here again. So that means that we can create your own, our own appender and in this do append method we can handle uh, the message or the priority or whatever we want to do and send that to a database or to any other caching or uh, framework that we want to work with. So if the framework for logging that you are using doesn't support the log4j framework, so you can't ha they don't have any ready appender for you, you can create your own. The important part is that in your appender you need to, if the you have a slow backend, create some kind of caching so you don't send a lot of small messages because logging can be very fast and very uh, efficient if you do it right, but if you have a lot of messages going through and you send each message over HTTP and you don't can't, can't handle that traffic load, then you can have a problem or a performance uh, issue with your application. So do some caching and then send batches of information is a good approach there. So this is what I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.